okay uh, respected moderators respected panelists uh, teachers colleagues and friends my lecture is an update of hypertension hypertension update means uh, 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 there is a new guideline which is published in uh, uh, june uh, this year and the uh, the queries about the last two uh, guidelines of ACCRI and european society of cardiology and european society of hypertension uh, 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 give us some queries and this uh, deal with these queries and this is the guideline which uh, uh, give us the new horizon. Uh, this guideline has uh, two terms which is known as optimal and essential. Optimal care refers to evidence-based standard of care articulation in recent uh, of this guideline which would not always be possible. This is the extreme uh, uh, facilities for uh, treating a patient with hypertension. And essential standards the minimum standard of care. That means we should always maintain the essential and if possible, we should continue with the optimal standard. Uh, the, uh, uh, the guideline has the, uh, discussed about the depth of the disease. Uh, raised blood pressure remains the leading, co uh, leading cause of death globally, accounting 10 to 4 million deaths per year. Uh, blood pressure trends uh, show the clear shift of highest BP blood pressure from high income society to low and moderate income regions with estimated of 349 million with hypertension in the high income countries to and 1.04 million in the low income countries. Uh, this is due to uh, low levels of awareness, treatment and control laid in the low income uh, countries uh, uh, when compared to high income countries. And uh, International Society of Hypertension, who published this guideline, launched a global campaign to increase the awareness of uh, raised blood pressure, named as May Measurement and Month, uh, which is known as MMM Initiative. Uh, in this aspect, I want to say that in our hospital, uh, we also maintain this MMM. In the month of May, we measure blood pressure in different areas. At that time, we have uh, uh, hypertension a measurement clinic in our lower uh, in the lower floor of our hospital and we have mentioned in different uh, shopping malls uh, train station and lawn station also for the last four years new developments of this guideline are redefining of hypertension initiation treatment with a single pill combination advising wider out of office blood pressure measurement and lower blood pressure target uh, this uh, guidelines is due to this guideline can be used globally at uh, application in low and high resource area uh, groups of people and has concise, simplified and easy use. Uh, this is the uh, uh, guideline, uh, new guideline uh, hypertension classification. It is more simply the simple than JNC7 also. It is normal, high normal and uh, you all know and grade one, grade two, it is made simple. Isolated uh, blood pressure also made a new change. It is systolic blood pressure more than 140 and diastolic blood pressure less than 80, which is more common in younger and adults. Uh, the diagnosis of hypertension has been uh, uh, modified to an extent. Uh, according to them, a person having a systolic blood pressure of uh, office blood pressure or in a clinic blood or hospital blood pressure of equal or more than 140 by 90 is hypertensive. Uh, 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 the diagnosis, uh, no single diagnosis can be, no single, I am learning short, no the diagnosis should not be made in a single office visit. Uh, uh, a, a, a office, single office visit should be diagnosed as hypertension when the blood pressure is more than 180 more than one more, more than 180 by 100 and if more than single visit uh, the visit has been uh, calculated in this guideline it is two to three office visit at, at one to four weeks interval uh, this is the uh, office visit protocol and three blood pressure measured in one minute interval L uh, last two should be averaged if first one is less than 130 by 85 then the second uh, uh, not be uh, measured uh, blood pressure, uh, 
in ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, uh, uh, some things has been changed. In ambulatory, before visiting the high uh, hospital care personnel, uh, three to uh, uh, seven times a day in the morning, around the evening, blood pressure should be maintained two times at a five minutes interval, uh, five minutes taking rest at that one minute interval. And in the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, they are saying that in ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, the monitoring may be ambiguous. And minimum seven readings in the daytime, uh, in, in the night time, and 20 readings in the, uh, the night, daytime should be validated for an ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, or the monitoring should be repeated. Uh, this you all know uh, in office, in ambulatory, if the average is more than 130 by 80, or in home blood pressure, it is 135 by 85. Uh, the, the new guidelines have uh, given some information about the chronic inflammatory disease with hypertension. Uh, this is the uh, risk of the hypertension with the other risk factors. If the blood pressure is normal and he had HMOD or a CKD or diabetes or a cardiovascular disease, the, he will be evaluated as a high risk patient. And if his blood pressure is, uh, uh, is 160 by 180 and he has no risk factor, he also be evaluated at moderate to high risk. Uh, regarding the uh, drugs which may cause hypertension, new uh, uh, drugs such as uh, uh, SSR, SNRI, the selective non-epinephrine and serotonin uptake may cause hypertension. And SSRI is said that not producing hypertension. Some antiviral uh, may be uh, caused hypertension. The new guideline has said an acetaminophen may cause hypertension. There is a seasonal variation of blood pressure. That is, BP uh, is uh, maybe lower in uh, higher temperature, and in uh, it is more in uh, lower temperature group. With uh, the different disease in in coronary artery disease, with coronary artery disease. The target is 130 by 80. Uh, AC inhibitor, ARB, beta blocker can be given. There's more emphasized on re reducing the LDL uh, to less than 55 in coronary artery disease. In chronic stroke, it is a chronic stroke where uh, target blood pressure in 130 by 80, LDL cholesterol should be less than 70. Uh, in hypertension with heart failure, uh, the new guideline has uh, uh, said that uh, Calcium channel blockers may be uh, indicated in case of poor BP control because the previous guidelines are uh, contraindicating these calcium channel blockers in high cardiac failure. Uh, ARNI can be used as an alternative to AC inhibitor and ARB. Uh, the uh, kidney disease target blood pressure is 130 by 80. AC inhibitor uh, uh, and ARB should be the first line of drug if the patient has EGFR less than 30 then uh, diuretics, uh, 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 diuretics should be aided. Uh, this is the new uh, 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 association. They said that hypertension has increased comorbidity with patients with COPD. Uh, target is as uh, 130 by 80. Uh, ARB, ARB should be the drug of choice in case of patients with COPD. Beta blocker should be used in patients with uh, coronary artery disease and heart failure with COPD patients. And in some HIV and AIDS, HIV and AIDS has an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, it has an interaction with uh, 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 calcium channel blockers. So this should be uh, given cautiously. In diabetes, uh, you all know uh, the, guide, uh, the pressure, the AC inhibitor and ARB and lipid lowering uh, drugs, uh, lipid uh, disorder with hypertension, triglyceride, if more than 200, it should be treated. Uh, in metabolic syndrome, uh, it is a high risk profile with hypertension. Uh, high, this is a new entity with inflammatory rheumatic disease uh, that rheumatoid artery psoriatic has increased risk prevalence with hypertension. Uh, the presence of a, a, a rheumatoid disease uh, increases one step increase in cardiovascular disease. Doses of high dose of uh, NSIs should be used cautiously. Uh, the Psychological stress and depression uh, uh, cause prevalence of hypertension and beta blockers, not metaprolol, uh, should be used with uh, when drug-induced tachycardia is present in, uh, in case of psychiatric disease. Hypertension in pregnancy, uh, it is very importantly given eclampsia, in eclampsia and health. Health means 
hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and new plat low platelets. This should be immediately treated, and delivery should be delivery is adequately required. Prevention of uh, preeclampsia is by aspirin and oral calcium. Uh, this prevent preeclampsia in high risk in the pregnancy with hypertension. First choice of drugs are methylopa, beta blockers. In the beta blockers, it is uh, the levetorol we should be used. Calcium channel blockers. Uh, and uh, add, we, we, we can use magnesium, but sodium nitroposide, the antihypertensive drug, cannot be used in eclampsia. Next slide. And then uh, the, the, this is a new entity in the, uh, in the guideline is breastfeeding. Uh, they have told that uh, all the antihypertensive drugs are excreted by the breast milk at a low concentration. So uh, to, they had been proposed to avoid etinolol, uh, propanolol, and nifidipine uh, also. The preferred drug is calcium channel blockers. Uh, these are the hypertensive emergencies, uh, which are the important. Uh, the, uh, in, uh, the important thing is that in ischemic stroke, blood pressure should be reduced up to a mean blood mean arterial pressure to 15% uh, if the blood pressure is more than 220 by 120. And in hemorrhagic stroke, uh, gradually blood pressure should be controlled from 180 to up to 130 immediately. And in acute uh, coronary events, immediate blood pressure should be less than 140. Uh, the drugs, uh, levitalol and nicardipine, the calcium channel blockers are the preferred first line drug. In case of LV, the coronary artery disease, it is the nitroglycerin. And, uh, and in case of acute pulmonary edema, uh, the loop diuretics can be if used. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, the prevalence of hypertension uh, rises dramatically with increasing age. They had mentioned that 20 milligram higher uh, systolic blood pressure and 10 milligram higher diastolic blood pressure, uh, each is associated with doubling the risk of death stroke heart disease and other vascular disease. Uncontrolled hypertension may cause deathful uh, uh, hypertension mediated organ damage, which is really fatal. Uh, so early detection and proper management of the deathful disease would reduce the morbidity and mortality of the patient. Thank you all for patience hearing. Thank you. Thank you so so much. Yeah, so we've got just like three minutes uh, for any questions to either of our two speakers. Uh, do we have any questions? Um, uh, Nessa, do we have any questions uh, from the uh, our, sir, audience? Madam, madam, our panelist, Professor Gulab Rabbani, sir, is there? Yes. Professor Rabbani, sir? I think he has left us. So maybe yeah. uh, any question from the panel, uh, from uh, our uh, audience? Given that, I have one question. Only simple yes. question. Given that, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, what is your personal recommendation regarding polypharmacy? That is single pill combination drugs. What is the personal yes, experience? Yes. And yes. another question uh, regarding use of antihypertensive drug during pregnancy. Is there any recommendation in different trimester? That is first trimester, uh, second trimester, third trimester, anything else? Or can you use nitrate in uh, during pregnancy? In severe hypertension? Nitrate. You, yeah. you can you use nitrate in severe hypertension, but regarding the uh, drugs in pregnancy, methyl dopa can be used up to uh, uh, 1,000 milligram. That is four capsule, not more than four. And other drugs can be used as beta blocker, mainly levetolol can be used, and calcium channel blocker, mainly dihydropyridine. They discourage the non-dihydropyridine in this uh, new guideline. And a calcium channel blocker, they then encourage giving the nifidipine in long acting forms and the uh, or nicardipine. And uh, can, because this drug uh, causes less edema. And regarding the polypharmacy, in the guideline, if they yeah. stay in stage one blood pressure and the patient is older, then single drug can be used. But in other patient, other groups of hypertensive patients, they have given the uh, given to use a single pill combination of a uh, calcium channel blocker and a AC inhibitor or ARB. This is the first choice in low dose even. 
they have said that in combination drug in low dose and and if the second drug should uh, and if the blood pressure is not controlled then the dose should be increased and uh, the if next drug should be added it is thiazide or thiazide like diuretics and uh, in case of two occasions the beta blocker can be used it is in heart failure and in ischemic heart disease thank you Oh, so uh, actually, I can yes, see uh, 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 Sir Sir has joined us. I will request him to make a, a couple of concluding remarks and conclude the session. So uh -huh. we'll be right on time, actually. Okay. So, Sir, okay. any last few words or comments on the session? And you can conclude the session, Sir. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Uh, respected panelists, the moderators, learned participants, speakers. Assalamu alaikum. At the outset, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to the authority of National Heart Foundation Hospital for inviting me as a panelist in this important session. Definitely, audience, you will be agreed with me that we have learned a lot of things because pandemic is going on regarding COVID-19 virus and we know very little about it. So this time, I think it was elaborately described. Uh, the latest year update of national guidelines was in November. Definitely we'll get it very soon. So I can tell you that these speeches, the lectures has enhanced our knowledge so that we'll be able to manage these patients very efficiently in the future. As a cardiologist, definitely I have learned a lot today and management of hypertension as well excellent and also the complications of COVID with uh, cardiovascular diseases and general guidelines all were very much available to us. So with this much, I give you thank once again for patient hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nessa, we conclude the thank session. Right? Yeah, yes, madam. Okay. Then we can thank just you. conclude the session. Before conclusion, I must thanks to the Inceptor Pharmaceuticals for their great sponsorship of this program. And to our guest lectures, Professor Mujiru Rahman and Professor Abed Amit for their excellent deliberation and uh, um, elaborating all the aspects of the COVID-19 and related cardiovascular disease also. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all. Thank you. And to our Dhiman and Ishrak also, great presentation. We missed your questions. But thank you. So bye for now. Bye. Thank you.